Okay, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Um, be sure to check back for my full gear review on all the pieces that I've been wearing for the past year or so. And just kind of a, an overall guide and review of everything that I have and everything that I have had. Um, everything that I review will be a fairly long term review so it's not like I just bought these things. That being said, there you see the first item on the list, the Siddiqui Strata helmet. Um, so let's get started. First of all, you can see that it's a pretty good looking helmet. I always like the way that it looks, um, especially with a mirrored visor, which it has now. It does come with a clear visor, which I still have, um, although I rarely use it because I don't ride it in the night very often because of the bugs. So there you see the mirrored shield. Um, we'll try and work my way from outside to in and get you guys a good review here. So. You can see here, the shield has pretty good detents. Hopefully you can tell. Um, I, I never had any problems with it moving, no matter what position I put it in or how fast I was going. It seemed like it, it'll pretty much stay there. Um, it is supposed to be sucked back once it's fully closed. According to everyone, it kind of sucks back to the face, to the uh, eye port gasket. But... Um, one of the issues and probably one of the only issues that I have had with it is that somewhere in the behind the visor there's a whistle and a little bit of air coming through um, it's not big enough apparently for water to get through because the rain doesn't come through at all through the visor so that's the only issue I've had with that the face shields as you can see I just turn this toward the front of the helmet set it aside and then you pull out and the face shield will come right off. Same thing for the other side. Again, toward the front of the helmet, you just twist this little side plate, pops right off. They are marked L and R for left and right side of your head, and you just pop it off again. The face shield does have a latch to keep it closed if you want. Um, I haven't needed this because I find it stays closed good enough. You have a little tab here. It's pretty easy to find with the glove. No big deal. I would say this one probably has 3,000 miles of total riding time on it at least. And it's not scratched at all. It's just a little dirty. Um, they are supposed to have some kind of anti-fog coating on the inside of the shields. On For average riding, it does, it does the job. Um, however, if you're going to ride a lot in the rain or in the cold weather, I would look into some other kind of either shield mechanism I don't know if they make a pin lock for this or not but you definitely would want to look into something like that if you're going to do a lot of riding in either the cold or humid or rain because it does fog up a little bit under those conditions with the shell you get a fiberglass shell that is Kevlar reinforced in the I guess the most common impact areas if I had to guess um, it's got a it seems like it's got a fairly decent gasket around the eye port although Again, I do have that whistle coming from somewhere up here. This is the little spring-loaded mechanism that's supposed to pull the face shield back. You know, it seems like it's okay other than that that damn whistle. The eye port, I would say, is about average size. You could have a little bit further back for the peripheral vision and a little bit taller for sure. I do notice whenever I'm tucked down, I can't see as far up the road as with some other helmets. So there's that. Um, I would say all in all, about average sized eye port. You do get the drop down sun visor. Um, I don't really use it because I don't like the way it looks looking through it. I find it kind of distorts my vision just a little bit and I don't like that. Well, it's not that bad. If you wanted to use it, it's got this latch here that's really easy to find, easy to operate. You know, most helmets in this range don't come with as as many um, features I guess you could say as this one does this is the basic white all of this blue stuff on here is just sharpie just so happens that the blue sharpie actually very closely matches the blue of my bike so I just drew this all on here 
just to kind of make it a little bit more my own. Um, the vents. You have the chin vent, two vents up top, vent here and a vent here on each side in the back. The exhaust vents, I guess you could call them. Um, with all of the vents, I don't find they do very much. The, the chin vent does help just a little bit um, for the fogging up of the shield. But most of the time, if it's kind of rainy or cold, you'll still probably have to crack the shield in order to get it completely defogged. Two different pieces that move, I guess you could say. Um, the first one, you just pop it right up. I would, if I had to guess, I would say that this one vents to the shield. And then you can close it or open it. The bottom one also you can pop it all the way down and I guess that does vents to your actual face and you can close and open or not necessarily close but you can they have different positions. Um, the chin vent is one of my other complaints besides the whistle. When you're riding in the rain there's no rain that comes through from the eye port or from the top vents but there is a little bit of water that will hit you in the mouth area because of this chin vent even when it's closed the water finds its way through and hits you in the face not that big of a deal but it is a it is there just for you to know so the top vents pretty simple you know open and close um, easy to find with a glove easy to operate I have found that these vents do almost nothing uh, <laughs> you know they're probably I guess average but they're nothing spectacular even though they look you know they look like they would be massive vents you know with a big angular opening and then they got this big line that runs all the way down the helmet so it looks pretty amazing doesn't actually do that much and I'll show you why in just a few minutes and then you have the these exhaust vents in the back I have a feeling if they would have put these down here instead it probably would have sucked a little bit more moisture again probably average for you know this price range of a helmet probably average ventilation the finish on this helmet has held up great except for right here um, and this is just from me I had a GoPro mount on here don't know why but I ripped it off and it took a little bit of the paint off with it not the helmet's fault that was all me um, this big wing and these big humps on the helmet I have a feeling that that contributes to the noisiness of the helmet which I would say is a little bit noisier than probably average. Um, I get, and I'm I'm thinking it's just because of the angular shape and just all these edges on the helmet. However, it is very stable, regardless of which position I'm riding in, and whenever you turn your head to the side. So a little bit noisier probably than an average helmet, but um, it's is very stable no matter what position you're riding in. So that's about it for the outside. Um, I do notice it is a little bit wider probably also than an average large sized helmet. This is a large. It fits a little bit loose for a large if I had to say after it's broken in. I maybe could have gotten a medium but my head is, is kind of on the verge of medium slash large. So I got a large and it fits okay. It's still tight enough to be safe but I would rather it just be a little bit more snug. So flipping it over here, you have your basic, you know, almost every helmet is gonna be set up this way, although some of them don't come with a chin curtain. Chin curtain just pops out like such. It's kind of a faux leather, does what it's meant to do, I guess. You have, you know, your basic double D-ring, not a big deal. I have found that all of this material under the strap the strap gets kind of rotated in there and if you don't pay attention you can twist up the strap when you're putting it on um, not that big of an issue and another thing that I noticed with with this material being so long I guess if you had a big fat neck maybe it would be okay but whenever I tighten it up all of this hang, kind of hangs out under my head um, and it doesn't flap around or anything it just looks goofy and I kind of don't like it. So that's one of the only other things that I found wrong with this. Like I said it doesn't flap around or anything. It doesn't loosen up or anything like that. It does what it's supposed to do. It just looks kind of funny. So your cheek pads tucked into the helmet between the actual shell and the EPS just like most helmets. 
I did loosen these up before just in essence of saving time you get three snaps on each cheek piece you do have a little bit of velcro velcro in the front just kind of help it keep in place and the cheek pads and neck roll are kind of all-in-one type deal so we'll get that out the way other cheek pads same deal um, I have found that the material on the inside of this helmet very soft um, very short haired friendly I, I have fairly short hair most of the time and with some helmets if you have like a little bit more of this or a little bit less high quality material on the inside it, it'll pull your hair out a little bit whenever you try and pull the helmet off with this helmet I've never had that issue it's very comfortable um, easy to clean I just throw these in the wash and there's a setting for hand wash and it seems to work out just fine um, to wash the cheek pads and the comfort liner your comfort liner you got two snaps in the back of the neck area it pops out and normally it's not that easy to pop out I did already remove this just again for the essence of saving time in the video this attaches to the front just in there like so um, and it does what it's supposed to do like I said the the helmet itself has been fairly comfortable you get these um, little pieces of foam that are removable here so you can kind of customize it to your head if you need be um, th this is the reason that I think that the vents don't do as much as they should because this right here looks like mesh and it is mesh however if you flip it over you have a full piece of foam where that mesh is this foam stops any airflow not all of it but it stops most of the air from getting to your head so had they made it just completely mesh all the way through it probably would have done a little better job you have no snaps in the forehead area so you don't get any pressure points or anything like that so overall the the comfort liner is you know it, it does what it's supposed to do however I think if this were mesh you'd get a little bit better airflow so let's set that aside um, the the little breath guard is removable it's got these three little tabs here I don't know if you can see that that kind of sit in there it's easy to take on and off um, I keep I kept it on for the majority of the time just because I like the way that it looks and on the inside of the helmet you have your standard fare hopefully you can see these are the exhaust vents here Let's see if you can get that away. so there is one of the exhaust vents you have a, a cut right here where my finger is that's the bottom exhaust vent and then up there in the top of the helmet here you have some fairly large vents and they look like they would do a pretty good job but again that that comfort liner kind of gets in the way of that um, so overall I would say for the price that you pay great helmet um, if you don't know I paid a, it's $199 before tax and you get a fiberglass helmet which most of the helmets in that price range will probably be plastic um, it is Kevlar reinforced so you get a you get a pretty good amount of protection it's very hard to flex it on the outside whereas a lot of helmets in this price range you can kind of collapse them in on themselves this one you can't it's it's very sturdy you get a little bit more protection a little bit better features like the drop down sun visor um, the chin curtain you know things like that for a helmet that's two hundred dollars it's a great helmet said the, the only issues that I've had with it is the water coming in through the chin vent when it rains not that big of a deal I try not to ride when it rains um, a little bit of a whistle coming through the face port the eye port behind the face shield again not that big of an issue I ride with earplugs anyway um, if you don't want to ride with earplugs you're gonna look into spending a whole lot more money to get a much quieter helmet this one is a little bit noisier than average and I would not recommend riding without earplugs with any helmet especially a noisy one um, another thing it's a little bit big you know you kind of have not too bad of a bobblehead look but you do have a little bit of a big headed look whenever you have you know the helmet that that fits it's a little bit big um, especially width wise um, the vents are adequate but nothing special um, 
so all of that being said it's still a great helmet i would still definitely recommend it if you're looking to get a, a fairly cheap helmet that's still going to offer you a lot of protection and you know pretty good amount of features for something in this price range so that's all i got for the helmet review i've been riding in this thing for a year and it's good for i think it's warranted for five years um so you get you get a lot of helmet for what you pay and you'll get to keep it for a long time for a fiberglass helmet it's probably a little on the heavy side actually i don't have a scale um so i couldn't tell you exactly but probably somewhere between three and a half and just under four pounds um, but you know for a, a helmet with a large with drop down sun visor and and all these features that's not that heavy um so again this is going to be the first video of a full series of gear review type videos that on all the gears that I've been wearing for the past year. And just be sure and check back, like, comment, subscribe so that you can keep up with those videos if you're interested in seeing them. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.